What a joy to welcome you to my study once again. This is Pastor Van Marceau with a word of encouragement. I sure hope it is. That's what I'm doing these videos for, is to just a midweek touch to encourage you as we continue through this COVID season, and you're well aware of the ramifications of all of that. I missed last week. I was deer hunting in Preston County with my good pastor friend, Dan Hanchu, his 14-year-old son. We all three harvested a buck. We were uh, enjoying our time of fellowship and our time in the outdoors. It's good to be back with you this week. If you have your Bible nearby, grab it. We're going to look at a most familiar verse in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. You see, I have gift giving on my mind. Let me tell you why. Um, Janet had her 59th birthday, giving away her secrets there a little bit. Janet had her 59th birthday uh, just yesterday, Monday, November 30th. And so over the weekend, her sister and brother-in-law were in. So Sunday afternoon, Jonathan fixed a great steak dinner. The time I got home from church, he had roasted vegetables and steak off the grill so that we could have Janet's birthday dinner. And then Janet and I went out last night. So I've been thinking about gifts, and I was uh, trying to figure out what to get her for her birthday. And then, of course, Christmas is upon us, and we're all starting to think about, well, what are we going to buy for our Christmas shopping? I stopped by Home Depot yesterday afternoon to try to pick up one pack of shingles that I needed to finish capping off my garage. They didn't have them. I went to the pro desk, and the lady there was just nice as can be. She was available. And we wanted to order a pack of shingles. And yesterday was Cyber Monday, and we couldn't get the computer to cooperate. Waited and waited, and the website wouldn't come up. The internet was just slammed. People are buying gifts. Um, we passed a hat before the family dispersed from the birthday party on Sunday. Uh, Jonathan put little numbers on pieces of paper, passed the hat around. We all drew names. Uh, actually, it was names, not numbers, for our Christmas gifts. And so I was just thinking about. Tuning my heart for Christmas, having a right attitude in the month of December for Christmas, and getting the most out of this season to reflect upon the wonderful birth of our Lord Jesus, the ramifications of that, and not just being caught up in the commercialization of Christmas or even some of the traditions of Christmas, but having a right attitude in my heart. And so I was thinking about. Christmas as a gift-giving time, and I was thinking about how God gives gifts. Here's about a list of about five concepts or ways that God gives. The first verse I wanted to start with is the most familiar verse in all the Bible to most of us, and that's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a wonderful verse. I wanted to remind us uh, from the get-go, uh, out of John 3, 16, number one, God is a giving God. Number two, God gives from a heart of love. Our God is a giving God. He's not selfish. And he gives from a heart of love. For God so loved the world that he gave. Now let's look at Romans six twenty three. another very familiar verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift, the ESV says, but the gift of God or the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The third thought here is that God gives freely. Uh, the free gift, the ESV says. So God, uh, God is a giving God. God gives out of a heart of love. God gives freely. Uh, not only that, God gives expensive gifts. I don't know what you're thinking about spending on Christmas this year or what it's like in your traditions. We draw these names out of a hat. Uh, started that just a few years ago at our house so that we weren't all buying gifts for everyone. And we could just kind of focus on one person, buy a little nicer gift for them. And that kind of simplified our Christmas. And that's been a good thing for us. How much are you going to spend? Well, how much did God spend? God God gave his son. That's a pretty expensive gift. You do understand the necessity of that gift. Um, it was a necessary gift. It was a practical gift, a useful gift, because it facilitated our salvation, which was a necessity. For all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible says. So there's nothing we can do to get to God's heaven. And so God, out of his love for people, sent his son, uh, something you hear me say often is to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. And that is substitute into our place, go to the cross, bear the burden of our sin so that we can look to Jesus and live. We can, we can lay our sinfulness down, Christ pays the price, and then his righteousness is the free gift that we get for our salvation that enables us to stand before a holy God. That's a wonderful thought, that we will be able to stand with confidence in the presence of a holy God because of the righteousness of Christ that we receive, not by works, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, but we receive it as a free gift from God. So God is a giving God. Uh, God gives from a heart of love. God gives freely. He gives the free gift. We don't have to pay for these things. Uh, God gives expensive gifts. That's his son. God gives a, a, ne a necessary yet practical and useful gift, our salvation from our sin. God gives us then finally a gift that never gets old. It never gets old. He gives us uh, this gift of eternal life. Get that eternal life. It never goes away. Um, John 3.16 uses the phrase everlasting life. Um, the idea that from now on it never ends. And um, it's in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I don't know how you plan to give gifts or what you're going to give. So often we give gifts because we feel we have to because someone else is going to buy a gift for us. And uh, that's okay. That's part of uh, probably good manners. But, you know, um, I just think it's encouraging this Christmas to kind of reflect upon how God gives. And then I would like to emulate that, to give out of a heart of love, to give with, without any begrudging, to give that which is useful, things that are practical and useful. We kind of reflect the giving heart of God with our gift exchange. Where did this gift idea come from? I think it generated itself out of the whole idea of the gift of God in Christ Jesus for us. It's only December 1st. You're going to watch this if you watch it on schedule on Wednesday evening, December 3rd, 2nd. Today's the 1st of December, Tuesday. Tomorrow, Wednesday, December 2nd is when you'll be watching it. So we've got about the whole month in, ahead of us to enjoy Christmas. Our music changes, our decorations change, our, our shopping kicks in, and we're going to be exchanging gifts. And I just thought it would be good for us to reflect for a few minutes on the wonderful gift of God in Christ Jesus for us. God is a giving God. God gives from a heart of love. God gives freely. He gives expensive gifts. He gives a necessary, practical, and useful gift, the means of our salvation. And he gives a gift that will never grow old. Can you remember what you got for Christmas last year? I don't know if I can. It's not that way with the kind of gift God gives in Christ. We never lose track of who Christ is and who he is. I hope you'll be encouraged this Christmas. Um, I want to do my best to worship and to enjoy the season with my family. And I hope you can do that as well. It's a good time for us to reflect upon Christ as the, the world around us is still an uncertain place. It always has been. That's been magnified from COVID and from political chaos, from uncertainty. And I just trust that this will be a most blessed Christmas for you. Let me mention just a couple things and close in prayer. And I trust that this has indeed been just a word of encouragement to you from my office here, from my study. Um, Pastor Mark had the teens yesterday over in Maryland, and they were packing shoeboxes, all the shoeboxes that people gave, perhaps you were part of that, for Samaritan's Purse, and they will go all over the world with the gospel message in them. We want to pray that God will use those shoeboxes that the hands of our young people help pack in readiness for distribution. I want to pray for a gentleman named Henry. I've mentioned him before, Val Ann, his wife, Val Ann. I baptized her not long ago. She's a member of our church, but Henry doesn't come to church, hasn't attended with her except for her, her baptism. He's been really sick with COVID. He's only 54 years old, so he, uh, asthmatic, and he's had a huge issue, and he's over in Fairfax, and um, he's hanging in there, uh, really, really sick, 
a long time, wasn't expected to live a few weeks ago. Let's pray that he'll have a full recovery. I heard of a similar story just yesterday of someone who was on uh, in the ICU and on, on all this treatments and machines for 54 days, and they're doing great, and they're back to work. So there is some hope for Henry. Let's pray for him uh, and Val Ann, his wife, who's just been under it. Shirley Gunn fell down the other day, hurt her ankle pretty badly. Uh, we're so thankful for Shirley and her faithfulness. Prayed with her over the phone. She had a great attitude. She always does. And I just um, am reminded of people like her who are kind of alone. She has some family members checking on her daily. But if you're out there and you're alone, uh, I just trust that you'll be encouraged and know that we love you. We can't wait till you're back here in church, but we completely understand about the need to to stay safe from the virus. Let me just close with a word of prayer, and uh, let's ask God to give us the right attitude this Christmas, that we would be worshipers of Jesus Christ, and then as we give gifts, that we would have opportunity to share the love of Christ with other people. Father, we are grateful to have met this way through the internet. I thank you for our Bibles. I thank you for these most familiar verses, John 3, 16, Romans 6, 23. Thank you for this reminder of what kind of a gift giver you are. Thank you for giving Jesus Christ as our Savior, uh, the greatest gift that could ever have been given, and it never grows old. Father, may we just grow sweeter in our relationship with you and with Christ as the days go by. Father, I pray that um, you would bless Henry, um, Valian's husband. I pray that he would heal. I pray for others who are struggling, coming out of cancer treatments, uh, waiting for reports back from cancer tests. There are many people like that. I pray your blessing upon them. Others have been turning in prayer requests for family members who aren't part of our church, who have um, heart surgeries and things like that. I just pray for the burdens that people are bearing right now. Father, I pray for COVID. The, the, it sounds like the vaccination is uh, soon to be delivered. We thank you for that and just the incredible speed with which that was developed. We trust it will work. We trust that COVID would soon be behind us. We think of the political situation, Lord, in our country the uncertainty of that. Uh, we are concerned about some of the reports we're hearing about fraudulent voting. Um, whatever is truth, Lord, whatever is right, may you expose that. May you affirm that, regardless of who's the president. May we at least be operating on a system that is trustworthy and truth-based instead of the chaos that results uh, from uh, just a lack of, of honesty and integrity. Lord, help us as Christians and as your church to let our light shine these days and help us this Christmas season to love like Christ and to give gifts in such a way that we can share the love of Christ. We commit ourselves to you. I pray that you would encourage those who are discouraged or downcast today, that you would bless them and encourage them. In Jesus' name I pray, with thanksgiving, amen. I look forward to seeing you via the internet Sunday or possibly in person. If you do come to church, the 8 o'clock service and the 9.30 service, the seating is quite open. We only run between 80 and 100 people total uh, in each of those services. And so it's pretty easy to find a place in the auditorium with no one around you. We encourage you to wear your mask, as our governor has been asking churches and people in church to wear their masks. Third service, that's a little different story. If you're concerned about COVID, our third service is not a good service to attend. It's just pretty crowded. And uh, But people want to be here. People are coming. We continue to pray for safety. God bless you. Have a good week. Live for Jesus out there.